All right, folks, so we hopped in the new truck this morning. We drove an hour and a half due south from Southeast Alabama. Now we're in the panhandle of Florida at Merritt's Mill Pond in Mariana. This place has been on my bucket list for years. It's known for three things. Crystal clear spring water, some of the cleanest water you'll ever see in your life. Very large brim, AKA bluegill. In fact, it was a world-class bluegill fishery just decades ago. And three, it is known for gigantic largemouth bass that get caught out of this crystal clear water. In fact, if you were to go on YouTube right now and type in Merritt's Mill Pond, Mariana, Florida, you're gonna see nothing but old school YouTube videos of people out there in John boats with bobbers and different types of bait, just catching monstrous fish. Had multiple subscribers tell me about this place, but for some reason, I never made it down here. Well, that's all gonna change today, folks, because we're here. For the next 36 hours, we have rented ourselves an RV that's right next to the lake, and we only have two goals for this trip, to explore as much of this beautiful fishery as possible and to catch a big fish before we leave. So we rolled into town earlier today. We found ourselves a little local bait and tackle shop. Just found quite possibly the coolest outdoor store possibly of all time. Seems like a gas station. When you walk in, there's like this little fishing section right here. They have some pretty basic stuff. In fact, we're gonna need some of this stuff. Definitely gonna need some live bait hooks of some kind. Some of those, those. Bobbers? Oh yeah. A couple of bobbers. Basket anywhere around these parts? Here, just use your, use your hands. Oh, there we go. The bait wall ain't bad. They got a bunch of hard baits in here. This isn't even the coolest part. You come around this corner right here, got another bait wall, just fully loaded. But you start walking back here and things start happening. The place just keeps on going. It turns into like a pottery barn. Got your gun shop right there. Then you come around this corner, outdoor store, boom. Camo, got some stuff for the ladies over there. Then you come around this corner, and it just keeps on going. The store just never ends. Got some actual combos right here, some decent Berkeley combos. Then it turns into this big old archery range, archery store. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this? Yeah, I, I like to stay here all day, dude. But we thought it was just a normal gas station, and this is just one of the coolest stores I have ever seen. And y'all are friendly. Y'all come down now. <laughs> After we left the store, we came over here to Florida Caverns RV Park, which is right next to Merritt's Mill Pond, and we got settled into our RV. Oh yeah, baby. We're home. Oh, sweet. Definitely locked myself out just then. There it is. Welcome home. <laughs> it's an RV. I dig it. We need to turn all the lights on in this thing. See, the guy that showed us didn't want us to turn the lights on because he's trying to save on the electricity bill. No. But nah, we ain't paying that today, buddy. This is the, uh, the master suite right here. That's where I'll be laying my head. Got your kitchen. You guys know where an RV is. This is actually a pretty cool one, though. Like, I like this one a lot. It's an ultralight, but a tiny little toilet. That's sweet. Andrew, you could sleep multiple dudes in here, man. And you've got a little, like, card playing table right here. And you have an escape hatch, too, which I definitely don't have in my room. We're gonna be attacking this fishery from the bank, mainly, but we're also gonna rent some kayaks while we're here. We're gonna do whatever we have to do to get close to the big fish. Smash the thumbs up button if you enjoy this type of content, guys. I know you do. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel if you have not already. This is gonna be a whole lot of fun, guys. Let's get after it. Guys, we just got here and we're seeing just gigantic fish, not only on the drone. Andrew's flying the drone around right now and he's just getting tons of aerial clear water shots that are just showing hundreds of fish in some cases. We're not sure what they are, but we're seeing gigantic bass. We've already seen big brim. I mean, we haven't even got out onto the lake yet. We're about to go rent some kayaks now. We've got to get out here, okay? We're going to do plenty of bank fishing later on in this trip, but right now we've got to get into some kayaks, get out there, be one with the fish. And we're going to find ourselves a big one, I have a feeling. All right, a couple packs of baits, rape whistle. In this lake, you have to have a rape whistle with you at all times. I think they, they refer to it as a safety whistle, but you know, to each their own. There is alligators in this lake, so I guess that's some warranted concern. All right, which one of these kayaks is better so I can take it? Just kidding, Andrew, I love you. We got a little dry hatch. Oh no, that's a wet hatch. So this is just gonna be one of those have everything in your lap and just go for it type situation. Like the rod holders though. Now I'm gonna tell you folks, 
I haven't been in a kayak this petite in a while. I have to say, I'm a little bit nervous about it. Oh, it's a plastic bag. Let's go. This water is cold. That spring water is just something a little different. Oh, oh. Here we go, ready for lunch. My God, this water is so clean. It's incredible. Also terrifying with the alligator populace. Kayak's not bad though. I mean, it's a pretty standard kayak. It's about as stable as you need it to be, but not as stable as you'd like it to be. This hydrilla is absolutely just incredibly thick. I mean, who knows how deep it is underneath this hydrilla. That's kind of the scary part. Oh my gosh, yes, look at this, just crystal clear. A place like this, it's like, where do you go? Where do you start fishing? Everything is good location. Oh gosh, big old fish right there just took off. That may have been a carp or something. I'm just throwing a little weightless. Oh, there was, oh, that's a big bass. Holy moly. There was a bed right there. He might come back to it. Oh, there's a little bass right there. Guys, this is incredible. I'm just looking down at bass beds that are like eight feet down and there's bass on them. Wow, this is incredible. another one right there guys there are bass beds and bass absolutely everywhere there's just so much good stuff to fish i can't even like pinpoint what i want to where i want to throw let's try something else here let's try a little crack and crawl junior very small presentation but it's got a purple in it and we had a local tell us earlier today that he really likes throwing stuff with purple in it. This is a crazy little area. We got rock, got grass. The water's still crystal clear. Got a little bit of current working through here. Gotta believe there's some fish right around here. We've seen a bunch of brim just kind of scattered through. And we've obviously seen a, a couple really nice bass. All right, let's try this bass again same bass on a bed Let's see if i can put this crack and crawl on his dome okay he acted like i didn't even exist now i'm starting to get freaked out next to this solid black water right here guys the view is just absolutely incredible this is just this is some of the just craziest scenery i have ever seen I'll tell you what now this seat Oh, this seat's gonna test me more than the fishing's going to. God, there's some of those gigantic fish. I know you guys can't see them. They are massive. I'm not even, not even sure what they are. They've gotta be some type of a carp. Absolutely massive. I need to come back with a can of corn. Now it's getting deep over here now. This is like 10 or 12 feet of crystal clear water. This is where it starts getting a little scary. It's like anything could be down there. You just wait, you're waiting to just look down and see a dark outline of an alligator, you know? Oh, I just had something chewing on me in the grass. Yeah, I had something chewing right there. Get back in there. What in the world is going on? explosions. Now I'm going to get absolutely worked if I hook into a fish that's decent size. Oh, there's a couple bass on a bed right there. Do they eat a top water though? I don't know. No, they kind of, they don't know about that. We got something else though. A couple bass, hard to tell. They look decent. Definitely look like decent size. Dang, if I can get a cast right. It's hard to cast out these little guys. There we go. Oh yeah, I'm on the bed. One of them's looking at it. Ooh, she's nosing it hard. Come on, pick it up now. You gotta do your job. Ooh, ooh, she's looking at it. Gosh, one of them went for it, didn't eat it. One of these is a pretty nice fish. This is so exciting seeing bass on bed like this. Oh, I had her. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, we can catch this fish. We can catch this fish. Did I not bring any more craws with me? 
I brought all stick baits. Sweet. Well, that fish is still there and she is looking aggressive. That's a, man, these fish are like spawning right now. They're rolling on their side. There's a obvious bigger one that's the female and there's a smaller one. We're about to catch one of these fish. Hopefully both of them. I'm gonna cut down this blazing worm and just kind of give it a little bit of a tail because it's it was just kind of nipping at the bait. Let's see here. There we go. We're back on. We don't want to get in a rush here. We just want to kind of put it on the bed and just shake it a little bit. That's all. We don't want to disturb anything. Ooh, we on the bed. On the bed. Oh, he just ate me. Oh, he dropped it. Dropped it. <laughs> Dude, so the male just came up, grabbed the bait, ran it off the bed real quick before I could set the hook. <laughs> it's a chess game. Oh, I'm right on top of him. Oh, eat it. Eat it. Oh. Oh, he's looking. He's about to eat it. Oh, he just nipped at its tail. Come on, man. I've lost. Oh, there's the female right there. We're going to catch this fish. This fish is eating, actively attacking, doing his job. Oh, yeah, I'm back on the bed. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Right in front of his face. Got him. <laughs> Now I want to stay back because the female is there alone now. Uh. Oh, you're a little gut hooked, but I got you. Good job, buddy, doing your job, protecting the bed. I wish I had a live well so I could put this guy in right here. Female is now alone on the bed. So hopefully he doesn't go back too quick. See you, buddy. He's probably gonna go right back, but I didn't want to risk killing him. The female is much bigger. I mean, the female is probably at least twice his size. First fish at the new lake, folks. And it is feeling good. Haven't even hardly left the boat ramp, really. There's beds everywhere. These are not the only spawning bass that I'm seeing. Now, I can't see the female right this second, but I know she's back on the bed because as soon as I caught him, I saw her kind of just stick to the bed at that point. And I'm literally just putting this bait on the bed. And I am just barely twitching it. In fact, I'm trying to leave it on the bed longer than anything. You know, just doing nothing, just sitting there. Oh. Oh man, she may have eaten me and put me down. Look at that little joker, he's already back on the bed. That rascal, how dare he? We may be putting too much pressure on this bed at the moment. It's like they've kind of moved off. Just because you can't see them don't mean they're not there. They're really good at hiding sometimes. That's okay, we know where this bed is. That's the good part about this time of year is if you can't catch them now, wait an hour, come back later, you know? They might be ready to ready to eat. You ready to explore, buddy? I think so, man. Oh! Oh, that's a carp. Oh, is that a bass? Oh, dude, so don't paddle, don't paddle anymore. Oh, do you see it? Oh my God. That's like an eight right there and a five. We just cruised over an eight pound female and possibly a five pound bass on a bed. It really didn't even pay us a whole lot of mind. It was just, it kind of, you know, eased off, but then it was coming right back when we turned around. The key is, is getting to a vantage point where you can actually see and make good casts. It's really nice if you can tell when your bait's on the bed, and that's kind of hard sometimes. That's why a white bait is nice this time of year. We're gonna try to make do with what we got with that little blazing worm. All right, I see the bed. And the female just pushed off again, I think. I've got to back up some more. She's there and she's big. Big. You talk about intense, man. This is intense. This type of fishing, trying to coax the bass into eating your lure. These are good fish too, folks. There we go. I'm, on, I'm, I'm falling on top of its head. Eat it, baby. That's a huge fish. If I can get this Texas rig in the right spot, that male will eat it 100%. He's guarding, he's guarding one little area really hard. Oh my gosh, this is so nerve wracking. But also, oh, GoPro, that thing has taken some shots today already. My plan is just to kind of keep paddling and I'm gonna try to identify these beds before we run up on them. Then we can cast on them and have a chance to catch what's on it instead of finding out as we're running over them and just spooking the heck out of them. Well, I hate to say it, but we're probably just gonna be stuck just blind casting out here, 
hoping to get lucky until it gets a little bit later in the evening and then probably try to throw that frog. We could try to throw the frog now. We could just pick one of these banks and just start throwing it and see what happens. There's all these like holes in the hydrilla. Like you've got the super thick grass that's just all throughout this place. But then you've got these holes, you've got these lanes, you've got areas that you could cast where there might be a bed. One out of every three of them has a bass on. It's gotta be getting close to that time of year for them, real close. So who's gonna try to stand up in one of these things? Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to stand up and at some point just to stretch my back out a little bit because this thing is it's a little rough. Oh, it stands. You feel pretty confident? Let me see if I can figure out how deep it actually is. Oh yeah, see that hydrilla? Like that's not the bottom, that's just the bottom of the hydrilla. Let's move it up a little shallower and let's just see what's popping. This is so dumb. It's really not even that bad, but it's also terrible. Oh yes, that's so stable. And my feet don't even fit in between, so they're like just wedged in there. Ha! Huh. I don't know how much of this I want to do. Like setting the hook on this is a guarantee to fall out. I'm respectfully gonna abandon that mission. <laughs> respectfully. I don't want anything to do with that. All right, let's try out some of this cheese over here. That's some thick stuff. Oh! Dude, I just got hit! Yes, I did. First cast on the frog. You didn't get it though. Oh my god. Oh! An owl just tried to steal my frog. I have never in my life, and I could see that dude's face. He was coming in hard. He saw that frog and he was like, oh, bet. I've never in my life seen an owl dive at a bass fishing lure. That's that's the first, that's a first for me. And I was just terrified to hook an owl. You talk about an animal that you don't want to have to wrangle to get free, an owl would be high up there on the list. Broad daylight. Oh, there he comes again. He was coming for it again. Dude, the owls down here are out of control. What is going on? Owls eating frogs. Somebody looked that up real quick. Apparently that's something. That's a thing. Okay, here we go. We found some green slime now. Green slime and the frog, those two things go together like peanut butter and jelly. Oh yeah. Owl? Dude, I mean, I'm gonna have to fight this owl. This owl is straight b made. A little stump feel coming up here. It's amazing, I have not seen another single bed now that we've left like the dam side. Oh, that's a tree. Dude, we gotta find some more beds, man. We gotta find some more spawning activity. I'm gonna have to find a new back after today. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm getting destroyed by bluegill or something. I just got machine gun tap. <laughs> Gotta be something big old aggressive bluegill. Yeah, we should definitely make a few casts back up underneath this bridge, like blind cast. I saw another absolute stud. I mean, there's a little rock, rock bed shelf right there. I bet you. That's, that's a bad, look there's some big old brim right there. Oh dude, look the water's green now. This is freaking crazy. Oh, that's so sick. You can see these rocks. I mean, it's like you're around top of them, but that's, that's like six or seven feet down. And it's like 10 or 12 feet down there in the middle. I'm gonna try to beach myself, man. I might try to stretch my legs for a second. The old legs, they need a little something. They need a break. So does the back. Watch your head. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, my butt is so wet again. Why is my butt always so wet? Let's try maybe a smaller bait here. Smaller lunker log. That weightless around some of these fish that we know are here and we see them swimming around. I don't see those bass anymore. My leg. Oh, there they are, yeah. Oh, he's right there in front of my face. Dear God. Well, he hates me. 
Well, let's keep searching for better angles until we can get it done here. There's a tiny little bass. I bet you he'll eat this. Let's let that float right to him. Oh, oh he liked it. Yeah, he was interested. He was coming for it. He's about to eat it. Oh, he turned around. Are you kidding me? Dude, you showed interest two seconds ago. I hate to say this, but I think it's time to get back in the old kayaks. Because we know there's some big bass right out there. And unfortunately, we have to be in the kayak to get to them. We're looking for spawners now. It's gonna have to be a Texas rig type situation. It's a little bit harder to see him now because the sun's kind of at an angle. It's not straight up and down anymore. Got one. No, oh, pip squeak. Are you kidding me? <laughs> We're surrounded by gigantic bass. I'm literally passing a big bass bed right now. And we got this little guy in the mix. Don't get me wrong, I'm not upset at him for biting. Ow. Oh, he's whooping me now. Now he's just making a fool out of me. Got me all dirty for what, Junior? For what? Andrew, he covered me. Smallest bass in the pond. Just beat me up. Wow, not what I was expecting. I saw my line get just hammered, you know? And I was like, oh my gosh, this might be one of those big ones. I set the hook, that little joker comes flying out of the water. Really excited right now. Here's that stinky bed. I want this giant fish off this bed and I want it now. I mean, I am just all over their bed right now. They gotta do something. Hates me. So we've come to Walmart to potentially grab a new kayak. Because I just cannot get a kayak sponsor. At this level in my career, Andrew, crazy, man. I used to be a big time kayak angler on YouTube, but the kayak companies are just like, you Lojo. So that's okay. I, we're thinking these two right here. These are Pelicans, kind of affordable. I mean, 554, a thousand bucks for the pair. Might be a little hefty, but obviously we're gonna take these things home and just use them for the fishing season. They seem like they're pretty stable. They're wide. They've got a nice seat. We rented some kayaks yesterday at the place, and let's just say they weren't the best. They were a little bit rough on the old back. So me and Andrew decided to upgrade a little bit today. Now these right here, these are some beautiful rigs right here now. And most importantly, the ability to stand comfortably and fish. I feel very confident in these two bad boys and the standing ability. Much more leg room, it's a wider craft. I think we're ready to do this. We each got a few different fishing rigs. Could probably gonna concentrate a lot on live bait today. Got some fresh jumbo shiners and a few minnows in there too. Some extra artificial stuff. I think we're gonna be good. I'm really excited to fish out of this thing. I'm excited to have a, a fishing kayak. I haven't really had any since I had those bona fide ones that I stole from Guggen HQ a few years ago. And those were okay, but they were never my favorite. I think we're taking the old flops off today. Oh my gosh, having a seat with back support, that is clutch. Okay, Pelican, let's see what you're made of. Well, I can already tell you it's a whole lot more comfortable with the backrest. We saw some absolutely massive carp tailing around out here yesterday evening. Well, pretty much all day, actually. So yeah, from this point on, now you're at you're at deep enough water where you can see down. Oh yeah, there's one right there. Gigantic, you guys can't see it, but... There are massive carp. We're talking about 20, 30, 40 pound carp. Look, there's one right there. Oh my God. Oh, look, there's some right underneath me. Oh, it's like a whale. It's incredible that these, the bass live right next to all these mega carp. All right, let's see how standing up in this thing goes. Oh yeah, that's no problem. That's a billion times better than what we were working with. I'm not seeing really any of the bass that were locked onto some of these beds yesterday. I don't know if it's just too early in the day. Maybe they're out doing other stuff, you know? Maybe they're not worried about making babies as much today as they were yesterday. I'd just like to see one. Oh, there's one. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that's a big bass. Still on a bed. Okay, that's good. If you've never fished out of a kayak before, I'd highly recommend it. 
especially if you want to humble yourself because it's really oh it's really easy to screw up in a kayak like i'm proving right now going blindly reach in here and grab a shiner oh you feel like a good one lively that's how we like them simple little circle hook i'm just gonna back hook him so he's still alive i'm just gonna kind of send him over here for now the shiner is swimming though that's a good first sign he's actually swimming right towards the bed oh my gosh he's on top of the bed now i can't see the bass from this far away i'm about to stand up i just don't want to get blown all over the place acting as a human sail oh there we go that's kind of where it swam to it's going back and forth it's such a big shadow are you telling me this bass is not going to eat a live shiner is that what you're telling me on its bed i just have a hard time believing that gosh where'd that bass go i don't even oh there it is i finally saw her she's on this back side of the bed she's just circling it oh she might be heading towards that shiner here shortly these bass have a lot more self-control than what i'm used to i've been watching this bass like circle the bait Like right there, he's on top of the bed, the shiner is. I've spent way too much time on this one fish. It's just a really good one. And it's obvious that it's a good one, so it's hard to leave alone, but I think I will for a little while. I think I'm gonna join old Andrew on the under the bridge mission. We saw some biggins under the bridge yesterday. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. In there, in the shade. Gotta be some bass in there. I'd like to move a little bit further into the belly of the beast. Oh, that shade feels so good. I'm gonna need these wind gusts to chill, especially when I'm right next to a giant spillway that would kill me instantly. What'd you throw him? Oh, a little blazing worm on him. Okay, I respect it. Steady blazing. Come on, Shiner. I need you to swim, buddy. Oh, there it is. <laughs> what? How did that happen? Guys, I gotta stand up so you can get the full appreciation of this. Look at this. And it's all like this. Everywhere you look is this clear. And some of these areas are like 12 feet deep, 15 feet deep, maybe more. But it looks like it's right there because it's so clear. It's kind of overwhelming and it's almost a bad thing for a fisherman. Let me tell you why. If you just picture a normal lake, if you found a big grass flat like this or a big grassy area, you'd be like, heck yeah, there's definitely bass here. Let's fish here. But when you have a lake like this, where the entire lake looks like this, now you've got a situation where you've almost got too much of a good thing and you don't know where to start. Definitely awesome, but it's intimidating from a bass fisherman's perspective because this all just looks so good. You want to stop and just fish every square inch, but we don't have enough time to do that. Have not seen a lot of beds this end of the lake. Kind of weird, kind of strange actually. God, this is a crazy area right here. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is some deep water right here, but it doesn't really seem like it. It's disorienting because you just can't, it's like, is this five foot deep or is this 15? Now, how are you going to put a private property, no trespassing sign on a tree that's a hundred yards out into the water of a public lake? Why even put that sign right there? Like, are you, are you trying to tell me that I can't take this kayak past that point? Because if that's what you're trying to tell me, that's, that's just silly and it's going to happen. This is topwater frog only territory. And we tried that yesterday for a long time without even really a single bite. You ready to jump in? I think you should. Here we go, baby. Oh, I thought you were going to take the pants off too. I was like, dang, dude. You reached for them. <laughs> right back to the kayak. I got you, dude. We got these alligators surrounded. We're good. How's it feel? It's cold. Yeah? It's in my breath away, baby. A 
Okay, so it's not, it's like 10, 10 feet. Okay. Oh, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I, oh, there you go, you got her. Nice, nicely done. Hell yeah, man, human depth finder.